market chains entering into exclusive lease agreements that restrict landlords from being able to rent space within their developments to other retailers that may potentially compete with these national supermarket chains. The third objective, the impact of regulations, municipality, municipal town planning and bylaws on small and independent retailers in townships, peri-urban areas, rural areas, and, in, and the informal economy. The fourth objective, the impact of the buyer power of buyer groups and other large purchasers of fast-moving consumer good products on small and independent retailers in townships, peri-urban areas, rural areas, and the informal economy. The fifth objective, the impact of certain identified value chains on the operations of small and independent retailers in townships, peri-urban areas, rural areas, and the informal economy. And the last objective, the inquiry will also probe the dynamics relating to competition between foreign and South African operated small and independent retailers. This refers to spaza shops and general dealers, dealers, for example, in townships, peri-urban areas, rural areas, and the informal economy. However, it is important to note that this objective will not be covered during the course of these public hearings. It is important to reiterate that these objectives are not findings of harm, nor may they be considered, considered as preliminary conclusions of the panel on the state of the grocery retail market. The objectives as listed in the terms of reference and the statement of issues are starting points for the inquiries, uh, for the inquiries analysis of this market and may be amended as required during the course of the inquiries assessment depending on the information received from, um, from and submissions made by stakeholders in, this, in these proceedings and through other information gathering uh, exercises. Furthermore, these objectives are intended to act as a guide to stakeholders when making their submissions of relevant and related issues that are to be considered by the panel. Um, and I'll move on there. I just want to give you an update on the progress of the grocery retail market inquiry. That is where we are and where we've been, or what, where we are, basically. From the time that the inquiry started, the technical team and the panel have embarked on an extensive information gathering exercise. The information has been gathered through a number of avenues, including one, general stakeholder engagements aimed at properly understanding the grocery retail market in South Africa and the, and the relevant role players involved in the market. Two, ta ta uh, targeted consultations in the form of numerous site visits and revisits to stakeholders in townships, peri-urban and rural areas throughout the country to gather specific information and data. Three, calls for written submissions from stakeholders in respect of the inquiry's statement of issues. Four, surveys, um, that's another way. Five, targeted information and data requests. Six, desktop uh, research. And finally, through the public hearings as we are having here today. At this juncture, the information gathering conduct of the inquiry can be summarized in four phases. Phase one involved the collecting of literature and existing data on the South African grocery retail market, as well as soliciting data that has been collected thus far in the market. Phase two involved a two-pronged consultative process. The first uh, comprised of um, direct meetings with various stakeholders, including research institutions, consulting houses, universities, all spheres of government and business organizations dedicated to small business development in townships and rural areas. These consultations served to provide the technical team and the panel with a working knowledge of the market. Secondly, this is the second point to the phase two. Secondly, the inquiry conducted countrywide site visits. The technical team and the panel met with, amongst others, small and independent business owners in the, formal, in the informal market, both uh, local and foreign nationals, government, 
grocery suppliers, wholesalers, new market entrants, property developers, and financiers located in, uh, mainly in, in townships, peri-urban, rural areas throughout the country. The site visits were followed by revisits where the members of the technical team and the panel further engaged with the constituents of associations and organizations formed by small and independent retailers in the informal market. In the third phase, the inquiry has commissioned two surveys uh, targeted at uh, consumers and small businesses, respectively. Thus far, the consumer survey has been concluded and the results will be published on the inquiry's website in the next coming weeks. The small business survey will be concluded in early June. So sometime now, basically. And the fourth phase, uh, which is what brings everyone here, is the, are the public hearings. The public hearings will allow the inquiry to give an opportunity to consumers, retailers of all sizes, especially small and independent retailers, and any other interested parties to submit their views and experiences to the inquiry. The first hearings were held in Cape Town in May. This is the second set of hearings which are being held here in Gauteng. And I would like to mention at this point that um, we've decided to split the Gauteng hearings into two. Um, from, man from today up until Wednesday, we'll, um, the hearings will be held here in Pretoria. And then Thursday and Friday, they'll be held in Jobek at the Pactonian Hotel in Bramfontein. Um, the next round of um, hearings will be held in Guazulu Natal from the 3rd of July. Uh, uh, until the 7th of July, but do note that the inquiry, may, the inquiry may also decide to hold additional public hearings in other provinces should the need arise. I now move on to discuss the conduct of the public hearing, which is important for those that are participating to kind of understand how we will be proceeding. As I indicated earlier, these, public, uh, these particular public hearings will only cover specific objectives that were previously stated. This is because some of the objectives, in particular some of those dealing with the informal sector, were extensively discussed and probed during the inquiry's side visits and revisits. The topics to be discussed at this public hearing are the impact, uh, both negative and positive effects, therefore, of the entry of national supermarket chains into townships, peri-urban areas, rural areas, and the informal economy. Two, the impact of long-term exclusive lists agreements and the role of financiers on competition in the grocery retail. Three, the impact of regulations and bylaws on competition in the grocery retail market. And lastly, the impact of buyer groups and buyer power of purchasers of fast-moving consumer goods on competition in the grocery retail market. At this point, we, peer, we hereby set out conduct which is applicable to the stakeholder submissions, uh, to the stakeholders making submissions. Number one, uh, where necessary, stakeholders may claim confidentiality through uh, the commission's processes as outlined in section 44 of the Competition Act. That is, if, you, if, the, if, if the parties making submissions would, uh, would like to make submissions that pertain to, to information that's confidential to their businesses, they can do so under section, uh, under section 44. Secondly, stakeholders should note that in accordance with section 72 of the Competition Act, failure to answer fully or truthfully is a recognized offense under the Act. As per section 73, that's the third one, uh, that must be, we would like uh, the stakeholders to note. As per section 73 of the Competition Act, a person commits an offense if they fail to comply with the Act. And finally, stakeholders should note that they, m they may be summoned should the Commission believe that a person is able to furnish any information or on, the, on the subject of the investigation or to have um, possession or control of any book, document, or other object that has a bearing on the subject 
of this uh, on the subject being probed by this inquiry. Rules for the public hearing, the procedure. The formal sittings of the inquiry will be open to the public at all times, except when the panel rules that, in this case uh, for today, I will be making that ruling, uh, except when, the, um, when I rule that a part of the proceedings be closed on the grounds set out below. Upon making such a ruling, we may exclude the public or specific persons or categories of persons from attending the proceedings on the following grounds. One, if the information to be presented is confidential. Two, if the proper conduct of the hearing requires it, or for any other reason that would be justifiable in proceedings of the Competition Tribunal and Competition Appeal Court, or in terms of the Competition Act. All the sessions will be recorded and streamed, and streamed live online, save for, the, for those sessions or parts of sessions that are closed. In order to allow for the proper ventilation of information, the panel, as well as the head of the inquiry's technical team, may pose questions to the person making oral submissions or to any witness. Um, on this point, I would like to highlight that some people tend to think we are cross-examining them. This, is, this won't be cross-examination cross of any kind. It will be clarification points at best. So that, that, that we would like to be understood, understood. No matter how heavy it seems, that's what we are doing. Thank you. We will, not be, we will not permit any person, neither personally nor through legal representatives, to question witnesses or any other person making oral submissions during the public hearings. In the event that a stakeholder has an objection, co comment, or question in respect of submissions made during these proceedings, that stakeholder must submit the objection, comment, or question to the inquiry in writing by email at retail at compcom.co.za or um, retail at compcom.co.za or by post at private bag X23, Linwood Reach, Pretoria, 004, that's the postal code 0040, or by telephone on 012-394-3417. The inquiry will attend to the matter at the appropriate time.